campus is a wonderful institution and it's unique in this country in combining the three institutions. And it began as an urban renewal project in what had been kind of a poor Hispanic uh, neighborhood. Urban renewal decided the whole area was should be just leveled and start all over again. I'm an urban designer and an architect, and actually what happened in Auraria 40 years ago influenced me as to what direction I took in my career. You know, when we talk about what led up to it, I've been asking that question for many years, and it's, uh, it's not an easy answer. Well, I think part of the unwritten and unstated agenda of urban renewal was to remove poor people as well as uh, poor buildings. There was a different philosophy, a different uh, belief as to what would make a healthy city. What was considered physical deterioration was translated as social deterioration. Auraria was the heartbeat. It was the life force for these people that lived in the area. People knew that if they came to Auraria, they could be with other uh, Latinos, and they felt safe. Uh, there is something essentially Latino in the way they interacted with the neighbors. You have a community, a close, physically close community, that has witnessed those basic life cycles of birth, baptism, weddings, and deaths. There are some intangibles, like a sense of belonging, a sense of place. It could not be easily translated in urban design models at that time. One thing that I would always think about is the sacrifices and the, the extreme conditions that were taking place in 1933 when they bought this house and why um, it may, gives it more meaning as to how it was a home, a very special home. Because in 1933, we had a, a severe, it was a really bad year in the Depression. There was housing shortages. The quality of homes were, that were available were very bad. The Gonzalez family had 13 members that they had to provide shelter for. In 1933, my grandmother uh, was able to purchase this home. And it was really quite a remarkable achievement at its time, considering she didn't speak English too well. Well, it was Grandpa and Grandma's home. When we came over to visit, we, we would go upstairs, and Grandma was usually cooking, and we would just sit down and, and talk and relax. The restaurant really evolved out of who they were as, as people and serving the community. It wasn't just a restaurant. It was a community, a cultural center. Once you went in there and uh, had your first margarita, had your first uh, chili relleno, uh, saw these cute little kids doing their the, the folkloric Hispanic folklore dance. Once you heard the Spanish guitar, that that bridge to huge chasm. If these walls could talk, uh, they'd mention the hundreds and or thousands of people that came through here, the very poor people in the Depression who were looking for food and and work and the very rich people in Denver who felt that they could let their hair down and experience what a home was like, because this essentially first was a home. It was, it was a very, very sad day, um, because it meant that their lives were going to change forever. 95% of the residents, according to the 1972 poll, <laughs> uh, stated that those residents wanted to stay here. Dura's movement to relocate or develop their 
master plans were very abrupt to the community, and I think the scope was too large. It, there was no transition, I believe, time-wise. I, I believe things happened very fast. The Latino community in Auraria were maybe not prepared for that with, with these new ideas. Me and my cousin are interested in uh, moving forward with the events that happened 40 years ago and taking it into a positive direction, actually working with the college and the surrounding communities and in making bridges uh, to the past. I hope that our organization will be able to collaborate and that we will be able to work with, with the community because I think there's a lot that can be done. And as we gain more information and learn more about the people and the individuals and the architecture, we will find ways to benefit the students. Something unique to this college, to this campus, is that it was overlaid in the neighborhood. And, and, and part of that opportunity is to embrace it and to find ways to learn from it. It's a laboratory for learning.